And then our, our keynote speaker, Dr. Arlene Bay, also has his bending table out here, and I would love if you would please patronize his brother. All right, so I'm going to welcome Sister Kadira L. Bay, who will introduce our speaker. Thank you so much, Thank you. Me and my husband have been together for over 13 years, and I would like to introduce his book. I'm Kadira L. Bay, and we have a bookstore. It's called Cultural Freedom Books. And this book is The First World Order. And it talks about how we weren't all just slaves. Some of us were already here. This book has 419 pages and it is $100. You can get it from the website at DrAleemElbay.com. But without any further ado, I'd like to introduce my husband, Dr. Aleem Elbay. Thank you. All right. Um, <clears throat> make sure everybody can hear me. Is that, I'm um, good? Yes, sir. yes, sir. Okay. All right. So we're going to get into Know Your Roots, Know Thyself. And this is going to go pretty deep, um, like Tony said. So I'm going to try to put in and fill in some pieces here of general history. Because my major was also history. So I'm going to give myself yeah. <laughs> South Africa, which dated back to 2.8 billion years ago. Now, if this is the case, that means somebody was smelting metal 2.8 billion, billion years ago. Uh -huh. Who is that? Huh. You ain't got to answer that yet. <laughs> <laughs> Let's continue on. This is what they found. They found these metallic spheres <coughs> in which that at the equator was lines on several hundreds that they found. This is what it says that they measured between 25 to 100 millimeters in diameter, and some are etched with three parallel grooves, as you see here, running completely around the equator. Um, these spheres are reportedly so delicately balanced that even the moderate technology that they would need today would have to be made in zero gravity environment to obtain these characteristics. Hmm. Who had gravitational machines at this particular time period? Okay. You ain't got to answer that you. Continue on. Scientific American Magazine. It says a metallic vase from pre cambrian rock. It says the June 5th, 1852 issue of Scientific American Magazine contains a report about a blast carried out at Median Hill Rock in Dorchester, Massachusetts. Now hold up. <laughs> South Africa, 2.8 billion years ago, now... Dorchester, Massachusetts, look, 600 million years ago, a bell-shaped metallic vessel was blown out of the rock that was about four inches high and carved with exquisite carving, or covered with exquisite carving, indicating the presence of artistic metal workers over 600 million years ago in America. Mm. Continue on. <laughs> Everything you've been taught about our origin is a lie. Monday, 16 June 2014, just written by Graham Pick. Because he shows a half a billion year old hammer embedded in rock that formed 400 million years ago. A team of archaeologists analyzing data. The rock encasing the hammer was dated to more than 400 million years ago. The hammer itself turned out to be more than 500 million years. Additionally, a section of the wooden handle had begun the metamorphosis into coal. The hammerhead, made of more than 96% iron, is far more pure than anything nature could have achieved without assistance from relatively moderate smelting me uh, methods. Okay? In 1944, a 10 year old boy, Newton Anderson, dropped a lump of coal in the basement and it broke in half and hit the floor. What he discovered inside defies explanation based upon the current scientific orthodoxy. Inside the coal was a handcrafted brass alloy 
bell with a pioneer clapper and sculptured handle. Alright? With a when they analyzed, it carried out that we discovered that the bell was made from an unusual mix of metals, different from any known modern alloy production today, including copper, zinc, tin, arsenic, um, iodine, and silicon. The scene from which this lump of coal was mined is a, was estimated to be 300 million years old. Displayed in the museum at Glen Rose, Texas, is a cast iron pot reportedly found in a large lump of coal in 1912 by a worker feeding coal into the furnace of a power plant. When he split the open the coal, um, open the coal, the worker said the pot fell out in the coal and was found to millions of years old. It is set to believe that humans and dinosaurs did not coexist. However, <laughs> according to <laughs> conventional academia, dinosaurs roamed the earth between 65 to 250 million years ago. Now I just showed you that we was on the planet at least 2.8 billion years in Africa. As we spread throughout the diaspora, in America we was here at least 600 million years. That was 400 million years before the continental drift even occurred, based on history. Historical reports states that the continental drift, all the continents at one time was together, it was called Pangaea, right? Asia, or Mu. As they broke apart, you can see, just like a piece of the puzzle, you can put them right back together again. But as they broke apart, they claimed that that happened around 200 to 250 million years ago. So that means we was already in the Americas almost 400 million years before the continental drift. Mm -hmm. It's no to mm -hmm. So how can the Albion, which is European, state who you are when you have data dating back <laughs> to 2.8 billion years? Now you know the planet Earth is only 4.5 billion based on the estimates, right? So that means that you've been here more than half <laughs> of the earth. And being the oldest people, let's find out. Oh, that was the picture. Yeah. Oh, it's one that catch. Well, as the earlier alright bio humanoids, who, who, what they call Homo erectus, only appeared about 1.8 million years ago. That's what they call Lucy or Degnesh. Alright? They say they came from out of um, the Kenya, Rwanda area, up from out of the moon interior, which is Mount um, Melikin what? Um, my, um, Carmen Jarrett, and up along the what we call the blue and white now area from out of that area came forth. Now Lewis Leakey and Richard Leakey leaked it out in the 1950s that the original people on the planet is, i.e., the so-called black woman, black man. However, in 1968, paleontologists Dr. Stan Taylor began excavation of fossilized dinosaur footprints and discovered the bed at the um, Plotsy River near Glen Rose, Texas, where he unearthed, shot, and dumbfounded the scientific community. Alongside the dinosaur tracks is exactly the same uh, crustacean um, fossilized stratum, <coughs> where we preserve human footprints, well preserved human footprints. All right? So, this is the reason why, well, let's get to this. You've seen the Pangea. Right here, we go to British Egyptologist W.L. Um, Fel, um, Fenders, um, Patry. He says, in the early temple at the Abydos, underneath the dynastic temple, said that the prohistorical figure of the Terra Netra, a noble man of the Anu, or An, um, the Anu, or the Yunu, race was the first inhabitants of Egypt. Now who is the a new race? They are who we refer to scientifically as the pygmies. Alright? In the making of Egypt, page 68, it states that there is the original, aboriginal race of Anu people or the sun people who find that they occupy the southern area of um, Africa. There is even evidence of advanced culture that date back millions of years ago, as we already seen. So see, they never said in the book where these events, millions of years, 
coaches were at. So I had to go and look for them. Mm. See? So we found them. Signs and symbols of primordial man by other church war states that the pygmies are the oldest and the are the original and the oldest living people on the face of the planet Earth. The now niggers or Negroes, as you want to say, were probably one of the first of the end root races that um, that the race was the first and the oldest race of men after the pygmies. In other words, the Nubians. Alright, who is called i.e. the Ethiopians. You get this book called Gods and the Spacemen in the Ancient West by Wayne Raymond Drake. He states that the pygmies inhibited Earth for, from his estimates, at least 30 million years. Alright? At least 30 million years. That's from his estimates. Of course, we just seen how far he's off. Here's a book called Congo Katabu, uh, which was originally called The Pygmy. It's written by Jane Pierre Hallett. He said documents that the pygmies of Zaire, as the most, as the world's most genetically pure ethnic group, is surviving since the dawn of humanity in real harmony with God, nature, and each other. All right, Hidden Life in Freemasonry by C.W. Ledbetter. He goes on to say that the pygmy race is the relic of the older Mormons and represents them more purely than any other people. At one time, the pygmies were spread all over a great deal more of Africa than at present, and some of them were the first people to enter Egypt. That's why you go to Egypt and you walk up the pyramids, you will see shafts in which that is only meant for people who are about four feet tall. Matter of fact, the steps themselves is probably about half of your foot currently today. Because they was only about four feet tall. Alright? The word pygmies would mean small people. Alright? It's a Latin term, which means small people. Or little people. But you the origin and evolution of Freemasonry connected with the origin and the evolution of the human race because it's one and the same. There is no Freemasonry without the human race because all of the archetypes, the mental archetypes, is what forms Freemasonry. Mm -hmm. And the first people on the planet is the pygmies. So all the archetypes that we have mentally is from them. With everyone on this planet, our church war, 30 degrees, continue on, he says that the first men were the little pygmies. He descendants are set, still found in many different parts of the world in South America, China, Malay, New Guinea, and probably other places, but the majority are still living in Africa, where his original home was and is in around and near the Great Lakes of the Head of the Nile. Egyptian wisdom registered the fact that the Pygmies was the earliest human because the earliest divine man known in the mythology is portrayed as a pygmy, who is known as Best or the Trois. Here's the talk, term of various ethnic groups worldwide, who the average height is below, makes them four and under. Um, the members of this slightly taller race is called Pygnoi, and it says the best known pygmies are the Akte, or the Aka, the Ifa, <coughs> the Mabuti, the Central Africa, and there's what? Australia, Thailand, Malaysia, Indonesia, Philippines, um, Papua New, um, um, New Guinea as well as Brazil. The terms also include the Negrito of Southeast Asia. Lost cities in ancient Lemurian and the Pacific. So according to David Childress, he says the Hawaii, Fuji Islands, East Island, and some of the Los Angeles areas are the last remnants of the great Lemurian Empire. The Lemurian descendants are said to be primarily the people of the South Sea in, in Oceania. In Hawaii, there is one island where only pure blooded Hawaiians live. They have four aquacoid features, dark skin, and woolly hair. Mm -hmm. 100 Amazing Facts About the Negro by Jay Rogers. He says that the people of Negro descent living in Asia and Oceania probably exceeded the numbers of present Negro population of Africa. The purest Negro types are Southern Asia, hence the term Asiatic. And which that you will find within what, nation Islam, mm -hmm. nation of gods and earth, as well as also within um, the Moorish science team of America. All right, this is great um, geographical position of Mu, which is in Moria, um, which is written within the Church of Mu, book written by um, our church war's brother James Churchward. 
both were students of um, Gerald Massey, who wrote the book Ancient Egypt, The Light of the World, as well as also Gerald Massey Lectures and um, The Book of Beginnings and Natural Genesis, among others. Alright, so the fact is, if you get this, it's called Black Civilization of Ancient America, Mexico. This is written by Paul Barton. He states, in retrospect, ancient Africans did visit the Americas from as early as 100,000 BC. Of course, no goes further back than that. However, um, this is just to go into the factual law so you can know your history. Where they stayed for tens of thousands of years, and still is here today. Later journeys occurred by land sometime between 75,000 BC, according to the Gladwin um, thesis written by G.S. Latin. This migration occurred at the Pacific side of the Americas and was beginning or begun by Africans with affinity similar to the people of New Guinea, um, Tasmania, Solomon Islands, and Australia. In other words, the Aborigines. Um, the earliest migration of Africans through Asia from <coughs> that of the Americas seems to have occurred exactly during the period of the Australian Aborigines and the pro so um, African ancestors of the Aborigines said um, Oceanic Negroes, which is the Fujians, um, the, um, the Solomon Islanders, the New Guinea, and so on, and other blacks spread throughout the East Asia and the Pacific Islands about 100,000 years ago from the region of Africa as well as East Africa, the infusion of blacks towards the Americas as early as 30,000 BC was believed to have occurred based on findings at the region from now called Mexico to Brazil, which shows the same or the said Negrito types, which is i.e. the Omex, the Afro um, Dorinite, um, um, said black Californians, um, the Chua Rocks, um, the Gafi um, Funas and others. After 30,000 BC to about 15,000 BC, another mass migration from what is known as the Sahara towards the um, Indian Ocean and the Pacific, uh, Pacific in the East occurred um, from the Sahara. All right? Um, said blacks also migrated westward along the Atlantic Ocean towards the Americas during the period until the very eve of Columbus' first journey to the Americas. You want proof? Get the book, African Presence in Early Asia, written by Ivan von Sotima and Vinoko Rashid. Also check out Dr. Clyde Winters. Very excellent information. Alright, this is the proof of what we're talking about. Um, this is King Kamehameha, the first, the great king of Hawaii, who unified the Hawaiian Islands and formally established the Kingdom of Hawaii, who actually had just broke away within the last 15 years to say that we're no longer part of quote unquote, the 50 states. All right. This is Queen um, Lily Uakalani, who's the reminisce and she's the last queen of Hawaii. This is Kamehameha Kamehameha's son, David. All right. And he actually became the last king. All right. Get the book, What They Never Told You in History Class, written by Indo Kemet Kush. He states the first Americans were blacks. Scholarly Latin author C.C. McQuees explains that the strong possibility that black people were the first people in the Americas out of which later came the red race. Hello. Period. It is likely that we repeat that long ago the useful America was also a Negro continent, as it will soon be again that the oddities of Mexico and the Cocorum of Haiti and the Martina of Brazil and the Albion or Albino of Panama are the remnants of the Aboriginal Negro race out of which developed later, which is known as the Red or American race. All right, they came later, y'all. So here, you get the book, Africans and the Discovery of America. All right, you get that book. And the presence of Negroes with that traded with their traded masters in America before Columbus said Professor Leo Wiener is proven by the representation of Negroes in America's structure and design. Mm -hmm. But more specifically by Columbus um, emphatic reference to Negro traders from Guinea who trafficked in gold alloy um, Guinea and precisely the same composition and bearing the same name as frequently referred to by early writers in Africa. Go to Professor Alexander 
on movie notes. Unexpected faces in ancient America added that black people were present in America in the most ancient and pre-classical times. The startling fact is, um, is that in all parts of Mexico, archaeological pieces representing Negroes and Negroid people have been found, especially in archaic and pre-classical states. Now, understand what I'm saying. My wife and I went to Mexico last year, last March, as a matter of fact. We was on a cruise. The brother who took us on the tour, he was a Mayan. He said, I cannot lie to y'all. He said, the truth is, the ones who built these pyramids is the Nubians and the Egyptians. Mm -hmm. He said, our brothers and sisters with tight coiled hair and large noses. Exactly. Hmm. So they know they did not build it. They know who built it. Mm -hmm. And so because we came already knowing, he had to confess. Mm -hmm. And he confessed so nicely that he was able to take it. <laughs> so you can go to our website. You can go to our website, www.drlemailbank.com, and you can actually look at him talking and saying all these things. Well, white folks sitting it, look, you know, black folks like to sit at the back. So he was at the back, chilling and hooping and hollering, like, yeah, that's right. But the Europeans was up for it, and they had to take that beating from him. And he was beating them. Okay. He's like, yeah, we already know your history. Let me tell them what you don't know and what you haven't been telling them. That's right. And he right. went on ahead. He said, something happened four years ago. I said, what? Obama didn't become president. <laughs> well, he, that's what he said. Something happened about four years ago that he said he had to start telling the truth. So I said, okay. I rolled with that. So let's go to the next What's one. What's deep, when oh. they found these old Mac heads in La Venta, Mexico, they and covered Jackson. them back up. Uh, right. Yeah. This they, the area. they said it, it had to be us. And the only reason why they dug them back up is because the nickel that was in the ground. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and here it is, the black god of ancient America. Mm -hmm. All right? As a matter of fact, it says the identity of the spiritual civilization got to be most details in the Sudan and is in Mexico and elsewhere in America leads to the assumption that other cultural elements are identical in both continents and frequently bearing the same names as the African origin. So what he's saying is that the Sudanese, which is the Ethiopians, the Somalians, mm -hmm. called the Nubians, was already here in the Americas based on all of their archaeological digs and finds. Matter of fact, it goes even further. It states specifically, go back one, the blacks began his career in America not as slave, but as master. Mm -hmm. So that's the that's the key that you have to understand. Can you say that again, please? The black began his career in America not as a slave, but as master. master. Okay? But as master. Here's more proof. The, Af uh, the Afro-Americans in pre-Columbian um, Mexico, this is written by Diana Wolf, or Wolf, and she states that the position that blacks lived among indigenous, Mesoamerican, Indian cultures in pre columbian times, she goes down, and it says right here, both pieces are in the room at the museum, which contains sculptures from Veracruz. Um, no information was given on these heads, but there is clearly the Negroid black race. Numerous other portraits of Negroid people in the Mesoamerican be found in the two books, which I just finished mentioning, which is Alexander von Wittenoaks, The Art of Terracotta Pottery in Pre-Columbian Central and South America. And we also talked about his other book, which is Unexpected Faces <coughs> in Ancient America. All right, so this goes into proving, once again, our ancestry, not just in Africa, but he was a global people and even prior to anyone else being on this landmass, we was already here. Right. Continue on. Do you know the genetics of Native Americans? If you don't, you will find out. And as you see here, this Sudanese brother um, had the exact same facial features as the Omex there found in the burial cruise on the Venta um, or the Tabasco um, area of Mexico, or what we call the Gulf of Mexico, that area. All right? And it goes on, it says that the difference between an American Indian, which is full blood, um, who has predominantly Mongolian genes, and a Native American pure blood, who are the original Negro genes, basically that's the difference. All right? So uh, we have more genealogy towards the African um, aspect of being a Native American, while those in which they, they have put in position who have stolen your birthright have more of the Mongolian gene. And so, therefore, 
if you go back and study sociology, I had a teacher at FSU who actually played a tape of a, psych, of a sociologist back in the 1900s. And they was trying to find a category after the so-called gold rush, because you know, gold rush was 1849. So after the gold rush, they wanted, what can they do and classify the Chinese people? Guess what they came up with? Indians. Oh. Yep. They came up with the category of Indian. Mm. So now you see these Mongolians who comes in and saying that they Native American because they got classified as that 150 some odd years ago. Who have now stolen your birthright? Your birthright has been stolen on every level. You look up. You look up the word. Right, saying they Indian. Right. Exactly. You know. And then look right here in North Carolina. You have the Cherokee, who is. Kicking out all the so-called black Cherokee, who right. are the original, <laughs> who's the original genealogy and heritage comes through them. But the beautiful thing is the sun of righteousness shall rise with healing. Yeah, that's right. right. Everybody right. can't take the sun. So, check the back of your teeth right now, front, up. At the top and down at the bottom, the four teeth up at the front, up at the top and down at the bottom. How many of y'all have these shovel teeth in your mouth? How many? Everybody raise your hand. Yeah. I do if that means something good. Okay. <laughs> raise your hand. And I'll tell you what it means. Okay. It means that you're all the original people. This has already been genetically documented as far as when you go and test genetics. If you have the shovel teeth, that means basically that you are part of the original people who was here in this land mass. All right, the Empress states that 80 to 85 percent of us was already here prior to the 400 years of the so-called transatlantic slave trade. That we was already here. So, continue on. This is just proof of it. You don't believe me? Look at the United Nations de um, um, definition of indigenous. If you don't believe me, believe the world leaders. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is what they say. Indigenous, those people having a historical continuity with pre-invasions and pre-colonial societies consider themselves distinct from other sectors of the society now prevailing in those territories or parts of them. They form a present non-dominant sector of society and are determined to preserve, develop, and transmit to future generations their ancestral territories and their ethnic identity as the basis of their continued existence as people in accordance with their own, with their own, with their own, Cultural patterns, social institutions, and legal systems. Continue on. This is based on the Inter-American Declaration of the Rights of Indigenous People. Look at the Indigenous People's definition. Article 1, it says, in this declaration, Indigenous people are those who embody historical continuity with societies which existed prior to the conquest and settlement of their Tories by Europeans. Mm. 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 All right? So the European already knows he's not indigenous. Right. He's not even in the definition at the United Nations. <laughs> Look, as well as people brought involuntarily to the New World who freed themselves and reestablished a culture from which they had been torn. Mm. Mm. That's so, deep, so that's for anyone who wants to say that they are BG, I'm red, black, and green. That's good. Mm -hmm. Well, also, if you understand not just coming here 400 years ago, but also your heritage to the Omex, which dates back to 5,000 years ago, to the Fossums, which dates back 75,000 years ago, to the Washtor, that dates back over 100,000 um, years ago, to the Twa, dates back over 2 million years ago, mm. and further on, as we showed earlier, with the heritage right here in the Americans. All right? That includes everybody mm -hmm. in the indigenous <laughs> definition, because these are the black and brown races of the planet, mm -hmm. which are the most indigenous. Mm -hmm. So therefore, this is what they ha have stated. And look, the last one is, as well as tribal people, whose social, cultural, and economic condition distinguish them from the other sec um, sections of the national community, and whose status is uh, relegated wholly and partially by their own customs or traditions or by special laws or regulations. All right, so as you notice, Look at the indigenous people. That is the so-called Indians, who's the last one in the definition. But you is in the first and the second. Just in case you didn't understand who the indigenous people are on the planet. 
They made sure that you was in number one, number two. So if you're saying that you just got here 40 years ago, all right, well, you're still indigenous. If you say that you was already here, that you part of the indigenous heritage here, Omex, going back to Torah, whatever, good, you're indigenous. It don't matter because you're still part of the oldest bloodline on the planet. Mm -hmm. So here, what does it say? Self-identification as indigenous or tribal shall be regarded as the fundamental criteria for determining the group in which the provision of this declaration applies. Wow. You determine yourself. yourself. What this brother presented to you is the keys to being able to self-identify yourself, your heritage, your bloodline, your people, and tie them back to your indigenous culture. Mm -hmm. That's what's going on. Continue on. So, this is United Nations Declaration of Rights of Indigenous People that was passed at September the 7th, 2007. Barack Obama signed on to it December the, um, 16, 2010. So this is law now in which the United States have to abide by because this is international treaty. This is treaty law now. So 144 nations put this together. So now, question, I don't think that's no coincidence. Why didn't Michael Brown's family, why did it turn away at the United Nations? Because they did not have a nation back in them. They went in there as Negro, Black, and Colored. In other words, artificial labels. They did not state that they was indigenous and part of a community or part of a nation. You can't go to the United Nations as an individual. You have to go to the United Nations as a nation. Mm -hmm. You have to fall back into the family of nations. You have to fall back into the family of nations. So, as you've seen, they was upset. They said, we ain't even get a handshake. We ain't even get no sympathy. No, because they was expecting that if you did come, you have come as a nation, where is your people at? Where are your people? You say that you are black, but there is no black land. <laughs> where black land at, y'all? Right, there's no Negro land. There is no, um, um, there is no land. The closest is what Jesse Jackson came up with during the um, running of 18, what, 1983, 84, when he was running for president, and that was African American. That's the closest that we have gotten to an actual nationality. But the only problem is, is that there's 53 countries in Africa. <laughs> it's still too broad. And then you got America, which is actually North, Central, and South. That's four continents. Which one? <laughs> you got to be. You got to learn to be a little bit more specific because in law that would be called gene um, generic. That's called generic. In other words, it's just you know you go and try to get you know you go to the um, what is it? Go to um, CVS and they get the generic drug for you and they got the name brand. the name brand for you. <laughs> Moreover, Koreans are from Korea. Japanese or are from, from Japan. Japan. Mm -hmm. You right. see, I'm right. right. black where they said. Right. So that's an adjective in law, and an adjective deals with a description. It's not a proper noun. So the thing is that we have to find something in which that fits a proper noun. All right. So check this out. Article two. Indigenous people and individuals are free and equal to all other persons, individuals, and have the right to be free from any kind of discrimination in exercising their rights, in particular, the basis of their indigenous origin or identity. This is, this is just a summary I did of the United Declaration. There's 46 articles, but I, these are the main ones that I wanted to pick out and wanted to show. Article 4, indigenous people in exercising the right to self-determination have the right to what? Autonomy or self-government in matters linked to their internal, local, as well as ways and means for financing their autonomous functions. Article 6, indigenous people and individuals have the right to a nationality. So, they tell you that you have a right to a nationality, hoping that you would grab yourself onto one. <laughs> to reclaim and proclaim a nationality. John Henry Clark said this already, that Negro, black, is not a nationality. Alright? Malcolm began to start realizing it. Even Martin Luther King began to start realizing it. That's why he told Harry Belafonte that it seemed like I'm bringing my people into a burning building. You are. So, we, so, so this loophole is now being geared and opening up so that you can begin to start pulling yourself out of that fire as it burns down. 
All right? Because this, cause this is the last problem. stand for the United States mm -hmm. Corporation. This is the last stand for the United States Corporation. Mm -hmm. It's getting ready to go financially bankrupt. Mm -hmm. It's already bankrupt, but it's getting ready to go mm -hmm. down mm -hmm. the toilet for real. Mm -hmm. All right? That's deep then, because Article 4 states that you have the right to self-determination. We need to be determining our own selves. Right now, they're killing our children and not even getting in trouble for it. Right. So that means that we means. need our own justice system. Right. We look, need our own court. Look, there's no, there's no indictment on either case, on Mike Brown, nor on Eric Gardner. Mm -hmm. You affirm the fact that we can become our own people in this Bingo. country. Bingo. Exactly. That's all. Right. You just right. affirm it. Right. We're already a nation within a nation. In, a, in other words, <laughs> that's what we've been saying, you know what I'm saying, that we are. Right. However, we haven't solidified our, our nationhood. And that's what we're doing now, trying to solidify it. Yes. What would you have suggested that um, Mike or Trayvon Martin's family should have represented them? Well, they family? should have represented themselves under the Declaration of the Rights of Indigenous People. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's the only way that they could have been going there as individuals. Look at this title, Indigenous People and Individuals. So see, if they would have said that they was indigenous, they would have been able to go to the United Nations as, in, you know, as individuals. You know what I'm saying? Even though they might have been possibly tied back to a community or to a nation, and actually would have been able to get some type of um, respect. Okay. However, being that they're not even classified as indigenous, you know what I'm saying, they have not put in any affidavits or any type of um, documentation. See, the thing is that you got to understand this beast works with paper trails. That's Everything right. has to have some type of paper trail. Mm -hmm. So you have to have some type of paper trail at the register of deeds because that's where your birth certificate is at. Mm -hmm. When you go and get your birth certificate, Go get a copy, you have to go with it, to the Register of Deeds office. Uh -huh. All right, so you don't have nothing in the state that you're not a three-fifth person. Remember, the Declaration of the United States Constitution, Article 1, Section 2, states that there's three-fifth person. Understand that. Who are they talking to? <laughs> talking to us, right? Uh -huh. So you don't have nothing on record stating that you're not three-fifth person. So you go to court. They got the birth certificate, they start to adjudicate. Mm -hmm. I got jurisdiction mm -hmm. over you. In other words, I'm the master, you're the slave. You get ready to take you behind the jail. And you have no right to which you are no bound right. to respect. Bingo. The dress got cakes. Dress got cakes. Judge Tanny, Judge Tanny specifically stated that Negroes have no rights that a white man is bound to respect. Mm -hmm. So that means when you go to court. They ask you, do you understand the charges being brought up against you? And you stand there. <laughs> he just agreed. All right. Um, let's start to adjudicate. Um, yes. Um, we're going to give you uh, mm -hmm. four years, two years probation. Mm -hmm. um, nah, 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 nah. Yeah. And that's going to make my 801K go up. Mm -hmm. His what? 801K. Mm. The judges have the judges 801K. have 801K, just like when you work in you got America, you got a 401K. And they get commission. And they get commission. Who goes to jail. And they get commission. There you go. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like they have a private bond. Right. You got to understand. Guess what? The statute that they said that you broke, that's the bond. That's right. And it's tied back to the original bond, which is your birth certificate. That's why they charge you just like you do with your credit card. Just like you do with your credit card. You were charged. That's why they ask you, do you understand the charges being brought up against you? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And you, yeah, you want to get charged. Oh, you do? Yes, you're right. Oh, no. I understand. Right. Emphatically, no. <laughs> you're right. With all due respect, With all no. due respect, no. Because the Dred Scott case states specifically, I'm not a U.S. citizen, nor will I ever be. So, therefore, why is that let's, let's, right let's determine jurisdiction. <laughs> <laughs> let's, de let's determine jurisdiction. You have none here. Because you got to have jurisdiction in both manners. Proper persona, which means you got it over my personal property, That's which right. is my physical body, as well as also what? Oh, subject matter. Subject matter. Mm -hmm. So if you don't have it over both of those, Did or either or one of those in court, the case is dismissed. Mm -hmm. And if there's no, guess what? If there's no corpus delecti, which means an injured party or damaged property, mm -hmm. the case is supposed to be dismissed. Mm -hmm. But ignorance to the law is no excuse. Exactly. So, so this is another great question. Mm -hmm. um, Dred Scott versus Sanford. The same judge that presided judge over Tanny. that found him in error. Right. Because he didn't, have a he didn't have a nationality. He didn't have a nationality. But then he presided over another case. For people who did have a nationality 
and it was called the heirs of Turner versus the United States. And, and the they heirs won. Of, and the heirs of Turner had land. Exactly. Because exactly. you had to be tied back to land exactly. to have a nationality. That's right. I remember that. You have to have land. Wow. Because property can't own property. Mm -hmm. The brother said that earlier to you. If you property, then you can't own property. The only way for you not to be classified as three-fifth person with this property, you must proclaim yourself in full life. You must declare. Both, a in both your indigenous status. Because being indigenous means the inside your genes. It's in your genes. It's in your lifeline. It's in your DNA of who you are. Hence of why the elders never let go of their land mm -hmm. when they got it. Exactly. Because their land can't be sold. Mm -hmm. So you can go back and reclaim all the land that's been stolen, mm -hmm. like the brother made mention of. You can actually go back and proclaim it. Mm -hmm. You can do what's called a quiet claim deed or warranty deed. You can take those deeds, put it into a trust where the IRS can't touch. In the non interest bearing account, if you utilize your banking system, <laughs> but make sure that that trust is what is called an unincorporated association. And the IRS can't touch you. The only thing way the IRS can touch you is if it's an incorporation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you have a barren account. You want a non-interest barren account. That makes sense. Yeah. Alright, this is how Creflo Dollar wasn't able to be touched when they came in order to try to order him to see his books. Because he, he's not a 501c3 officially. You can't operate as a 501c3. That is under Lyndon B. Johnson's... Um, that's something he created back in the 1960s to make sure that the church would not be political again. Right. You can't be a 501c3. You have to be an unincorporated association. Non-profit. Not-for-profit. You want to be a 508. Right, which is a 508. Yeah, because otherwise you have to be quiet. Bingo, you have to be quiet and keep your mouth closed. Right, you could be doing, you could be doing this in church. You could not be doing what we're doing right now in church. All right, this is what was going on in the 50s and 60s. Y'all understand that, right? Right. One with the king, everybody, they was in churches. That's right. Teaching this information. Okay. But brother, what you said earlier is that you can always use the system against itself, though. Of course. Anytime you get a 501c3, because I'm one now, right. and I can tell you right now, if you use the system properly, the thing is, is what you're saying, you got to know the laws. Right. right. You if you know, know the laws, laws, you can benefit everybody. You know. That's true. Yeah. And that's true indeed. True indeed. Let's take that into account. Because account. a 501c3, they have money for them. Yeah. Right. 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 Face, face, grant. face initiative mm -hmm. and grants and different things. Right. 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 But guess right. what? If you got just simply exemption, you still got that ability in order to get grants too. Mm -hmm. So even though yeah, sure. even though you might be an unincorporated association, you can still go to the tax administration and get the exemption form because you're still seen as a temple or a church or a mosque or a synagogue or whatever, and still is able to still reap the same benefits as a faith-based initiative or as a or, or in order to receive a grant, mm -hmm. even as unincorporation. All right. Now you might not get as much. As a 501c3, but you still can still reap um, some of the benefits. All right. So here, we but also we are creative enough to stop taking their welfare. Right. Because that's yeah. actually what it ends up being. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But here, Article Nine: Indigenous people and individuals have the right to belong to an indigenous community or nation in accordance with the traditions, customs, community, and nation's concern. No discrimination of any kind may arise from the right of the exercise of such a right. Article 13, it says that these people have the right to revitalize, use, develop, transit the future generations, their histories, languages, oral traditions, philosophies, writing systems, literatures, and designate and retain their own names for communities, places, and persons. Mm -hmm. So you do a common law name correction in which that you get an indigenous name, tie you back to an indigenous nation, and you start operating as such right here. 33, indigenous people have the right to determine their own identity or membership in accordance with their customs and traditions. This does not impair the right of indigenous individuals to obtain citizenship of the states in which they live. So you can never be a U.S. citizen because that's the 40 mile radius of Washington, D.C. Unless you were born in Washington, D.C. 
then you're a federalized employee. But if you was born outside of the so-called federal zone of Washington, D.C., then you're not a U.S. citizen. So that's all Judge Tandy was actually saying, was that you're not a U.S. citizen, nor will you ever be. That's Negroes and those of African descent. You can never be a U.S. citizen. But yet, they told you that the 14th Amendment was fully ratified in 1868. Hmm. Let's see. <laughs> Hold on. I ain't going to go there yet. But indigenous people have the right to determine the structure and the selection of membership of their institution according with their own procedures. All the rights and freedoms recognized herein are equal guaranteed to male and female indigenous individuals. <clears throat> this is passed by the United States. Corporation, Barack Obama, President Barack Obama has signed off on the Declaration of Rights of Indigenous People. So he's opening a gateway for you to get back to self-determination if you understand the guidelines and if you understand the laws as the, as the God has broke down. That's what you have to understand. So here. He also said not to call him black, too. I remember him saying that. Yeah, he was on the um, he was on the Tom Jordan when morning he first show. Was um, um, elected two thousand eight. Right, when it was in two thousand eight. Right, he said he said um. They know, said, "What color you want to be? Right, what, what color are you? Right, what you want to be called? You know, you, you Negro, black. You know, they, you know, Tom Jordan to be joking. So he was like, "Well, don't call me black." He said, "Black don't have an ethnicity, no land mass." Mm -hmm. Now. He's trying to explain. He's trying to give you the clue. Without right, right. 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 That was that whole tribe um, in the um, Delaware slash um, Ohio slash um, um, Kentucky mm -hmm. area. And they murdered and him because right, he was trying Virginia. to give us 40 acres and a mule and our nationality. And he's facing the other way. He's facing right, the other right. way. Right, right. And as a traitor, right? He, he <laughs> the other way. But check this out. This is the reason why he was put on a penny. He called look at the definition of America based on Western's Universal Dictionary 1936 edition. An Aboriginal. Or one of the various copper colored natives found on the American continents by the Europeans. The original application of the name. Hold on, let's go to the year later version, 1937. Mm -hmm. It tells you the later name of the application. It says Aboriginal, one of the various copper colored natives found on the American continent by the descendants of European settlers. The following is the original application of the name <coughs> Ameru. So you can see that from the word America and from Ameru, they have the same root. Check this out. That's it right there. You hold up the penny next to your own skin. You will find that you're one of the copper colored natives. That was here prior to who? The Europeans. The Europeans. Alright? You don't believe? Go to a book. Um, this is based on ancient America. Let's look down here. It says, America is probably supposed to have been received its name from the mariner America Vespucius. Who is actually Albertico Vespucio, son of Auditicio Vespucio, had the Italian son um, sought in the mortality by christening the continent after himself. He would have surely have honored his family by calling it what? Vespucio. Vespucio <laughs> was called after Christopher Columbus. <coughs> but this is where they come in with their nonsense at, and they lied to us in school saying that America was named after America Vespucius. Nobody never called themselves after their first name, any landmass. You go to um, Washington, D.C., that's after supposedly George Washington. Washington State is after who? George Washington. So they always did the surname. They never did the first name. That's a lie. So this is how we know the term America, where it actually comes from, is right here. In Central America, the word America, look at that, in America. Signifies what? Great mountain. Evoking what? Moors. Moors. You got it. I didn't write these books. I'm just trying to show you. The sacred mountain in the Hindu tradition is said to be the center of seven continents. Ancient America was linked to India through the Lost Lemuria. The earliest um, voyagers probably believed America to be the native word for the land itself. 
it was already named America before Christopher Columbus and before America Van Spusky. Already. Mm -hmm. I didn't write the book until you were. So, go to the teachings of ancient America. Ancient America. Um, here it is. The teachings of Ptahotep, the oldest book in the world. This is written by Asa G. Heliot. He tells you the word Meru. He gives you the symbols in the ancient Kemet, which is the mouth of Ra, and the Howl, which symbolizes wisdom. Who they was called? The guardians. So the word Meru means the guardians. Who's the guardians? Let's see. Right here, Professor um, Remes, um, Refine of Philadelphia stated that the true name of the ancient city was Otomo, um, Otulo, um, Otulo. In a later interview with him, the writer submitted the foregoing correspondence and the professor has given his views on the subject in a letter of Dr. Corey, of which he has committed an ex um, extracted um, version of ice. It said, I have been um, <coughs> some time engaged in preparing the work for the general history of the people of the two Americas. And I have seen and have been necessarily affected by the um, antiquities of Central America. My work is based upon the philology of, as a means of tracing the origin of nations. A branch of the work on the origin of the primitive who? Asiatics and, and American what? Negro. American Negro. For they were the Negroes in America before the discovery of Columbus. <laughs> Continue on. There they are. Continue on. Here we are. Here we are. Go to the book, Sousa Economics, The History of Pan-African Trade, Commerce, Money, and Wealth, These Blacks Found in the Americas. It says the mound builders, they were dark-skinned, woolly-haired blacks who was the aborigine and indigenous Natives to North America and kin to the Omex of South America, the Omex and the Washington, the Black Californians, the Yamasee, the Californian, and other pre-Columbian Blacks of America was part of a prehistoric trade network that began in Africa and spread it worldwide. Global people, y'all, over 100,000 years ago and various periods afterwards. Here you go. You see how dark the Native Americans used to be? Mm -hmm. Continue on, don't look like none of the ones I know nowadays. No! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, took them off the Dallas bro. Mm -hmm. Full blooded mm -hmm. Choctaw, the ones that you seen was the Shuni, from the Shoshuni and the Shuni tribe. This is Choctaw. Look at them. This is um, um, Bertha, um, Pitchling. Remember of the um, Chickasaw Nation. Look. Trail of Tears. Cherokee, mm -hmm. look. Beautiful. Seminole, look. As we said, the Latin style of C.C. McQuees, he comes down, he's talking about the Ultimates um, the ultimates of Mexico, which actually the Ultimates is actually the Omex. Mm -hmm. Um the Cotal um the Corral um Caraco of Haiti, the Mataya of Brazil, and the Albino of uh, the Avions of of um, Panama, he states on the remains of the Aboriginal Negro race out of which they developed the race or American race, as he states. That's from his book on um, the study of archaeology and ethnicity. Um, continue on. Look. All right. So you still don't realize it's us yet. Go to the book Stolen Legacy. By George D. James. Who died for giving us that information. Oh yeah, he gave it up. And this is what they um, did in the Masonic ritual on him. And they slit his throat, throat from and pulled his tongue through it. Exactly. So during the Persian, Greek, and Roman invasion, large numbers of Egyptians fled not only to the desert and Nile region, but also adjacent lands in Africa, um, Arabia, and Asia Minor, where they lived and secretly developed the teachers who belonged to their mystery system. In the 8th century, the Moors, native of Mauritania, um, in North Africa, invaded Spain and took with them the Egyptian culture which they had preserved. Knowledge in the ancient days was centralized and belonged to the common parent and system, the wisdom teachings on mysteries of Egypt. This is what he stated in his book. So the Moors are the custodians or 
the guardians of this information as we took it in order to help civilize the European to bring them out of the darkness or the dark age in which they were in during that time period. All right. In addition, the Moors kept up constant contact with Mother Egypt, um, for they had established caliphates not only in Baghdad or Cordova, but also in Cairo in Egypt. All right. Just here, it would be well to mention that all the great leaders of the great religions of antiquity was initiated in the Egyptian mystery school. Okay. Continue on. So, when do we see the word um, Meru or the word more again? Is right on the walls of ancient Egypt, and here it is. It says this is on a um, Palamor um, still, where 250, um, 200, uh, 2500 BC through 2401 BCE, and it says the term more means a high priest to Anu, which is on a rock. It also shows the Sumerian god Anu was worshiping Egypt. The oldest definition of the word more. In the language of the Kabbalah, means the deity Amen, the hidden one, as well as means the high priest. Let's not be confused because the Tamerian um, Egypt is actually a remnant of what is known as the Moria Moon, Atlantis, the Samoria, is the extension of Tamoria. After experiencing the collapse of the previous empires, the Moors, which was the high priest, developed a caste system where they, um, in the sight of everyday people, maintained the secret or the science of the true self and filtered to the select few who have been initiated into the mystery system. Because we all have experience with a little bit of knowledge can do to a people not mature enough to handle it. So the Moors, which is the high priest, coded the science of self in mythology, no longer in dealing to the so-called mysteries, to the profane. In other words, cast out your pearls before swine. Mm -hmm. All right, so now this science can only be unveiled by those who have been elected. <clears throat> All right. So, you get another book. This is called um, Return of the Serpents of Wisdom by Mark Pinkham. He writes, one of the earliest immortal serpents for Moon to colonize America was Amamu Maru, or Ameru Maru, the serpent Maru. And he says, according to legend, he comes down, well, you know what's all that. Right here. Around, um, Aramu Maru had been a high ranking member of On Moon. Alright? And you see that one talk about to the next slide, please. You go to the Serpent Colony of Colonials of America. He tells you, America, the land of the serpents, that's what the word America means. That's where it comes from. Alright? The serpent on high at the great mouth is talking about the raising up of the cool. internal energy in your spine to the top of your head, which is the mountain top. So when Martin Luther, King, uh, Martin Luther King said the night before he got assassinated that he's been to the mountain top, he was that's what he was talking about. Not an actual mountain, of course. And when they say Jesus Christ, they're talking about the Christ seed. Right, remember Jesus was crucified on Mount Way. Calvary, mm -hmm. called Mount Golgotha. Mm -hmm. The word Golgotha means the place of the skull. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In Aramaic. You get it? Okay, so this is what everybody understood. So right here, he says the title America is derived from the um, question Numerian word of Amaru. Now remember, Tupac name was what? Um, Tupac um, Amaru Shakur. Did you notice that eleven years later, after the death of Tupac, that the uh, so-called United Nations Declaration of Rights of Indigenous People was passed on the day that he was shot. And then it was officially passed on the day that he died, September the 7th, September the 13th. He got shot on September the 7th, he died on September the 13th. Eleven years later, the Declaration of Rights of Indigenous People was passed in 2007. He died supposedly, what, 1996. So they was trying to tell you that it's, that it's postulated, this passing was postulated on the energy of the Amaru. Which means the shining serpent. All right. So here, the title was derived from that meaning, snake or serpent. All right. The question, the language of the Incas, is derived from the runa sima, the primordial tongue spoken on the Moria. 
And remember, I showed you earlier who was the Lemurians was the, was the Twa people, remember? I showed you that earlier. So this is how all of this information ties back in and also your heritage here in the Americas. All right? So right here at the end is the symbol cup, which denotes both circular wisdom as well as spirit. Apparently echoing the recollection of the Indian elders. H.P. Bavasti maintained in the secret doctrine that America is referred to in the um, Hindu um, Quran, Purana um, um, legends as Potalo, or Potala, 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 the kingdom of the Nagas, the serpents, the Nagas, the Nagas. You get it? The Nagas. Exactly. Right. So now you know the real esoteric meaning of that word and the reason why they really don't want you to use it because it actually begins to start tying you back to your culture. Have you ever heard them tell a Nigerian not to be Nigerian? Or a person who comes from Niger not to be called a Nigerian? <laughs> they tried to kill the word right. years ago. Right, right, so. right. Now, what's the difference between the word Nigerian and the word Niger and the word Niger? Going to just tell me it's just one G, right? Okay, so you got to understand what's really going on. So this, this is what they've been doing is playing um, trick nine to your word games. If they don't, if they they know who you are, and this right here is the, called the Rex eighty four, which is part of which actually was originally called the King Alfred Plan. Rex eighty four because Ronald Reagan in nineteen eighty four reassigned it. Look what it says. Mm -hmm. The memo is being submitted in lieu of a full report from the Joint Chief of Staff. This report is now in preparation. There will also be many cities with the minorities. Who's minorities? Who they refer to the They always say we the minorities. Okay. Okay. We'll be able to put into the streets a superior number of people with a desperate and dangerous will. He will be a formidable enemy, for he is bound to the continent. By heritage. Wow. That's damn. Wow. Wow. Yep. Yeah. 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 The word heritage, if you don't know, that, means birthright. Yeah. The word heritage is synonymous to birthright. Mm -hmm. What did they just tell you? Okay. They just told you, bound to this continent by heritage. So he's not bound to this continent by heritage. You are. Because we just went over the definition of indigenous people, remember? We just showed you. Yeah. Continue on. So, look at heritage. Uh oh, what it says. In civil law, every species of immovable which can be subject to property, such as the lands, houses, orchards, woods, marshes, ponds, etc., whatever more that they have been acquired, either by descent or purchase. That's the dictionary for petition deluxe. Look at heritage by definition by Webster's <coughs> uh, Webster New Universal on the Bridge Dictionary. Look what it says. It says right here. <coughs> To inherit something happened that down. is and can't be inherited, something handed um, down to one's ancestors of the past or characteristics, their culture, tradition, etc., the rights, burdens, or status resulting from being born in a certain place. What it says, Birth Birth right. Right. so they're saying that you are bound to this continent by what your by your birthright. birthright. But being that we stripped them from you and gave you the artificial labels, Negro, Blacks, and Colleagues, you have no land mass to be tied yourself back to. And started teaching you at age five, you have no idea of this information. No. Remember, this land is your land. This, this land, land is my land. So I just yeah. included myself, even oh. though I'm not from here. <laughs> <laughs> and you don't let me, because you're a child. Minority. <laughs> And this world is made for you and me. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, all right. If you go to the Holy Quran Circle 7, and even in the more science simple America, they already gave it up. It says the Moabites from the land of Moab was received permission from the pharaohs of the Egypt to settle and inhabit Northwest Africa. This is Northwest Africa. They were the founders and are the true possessors of the present Moroccan Empire with their Canaanite, Satanites, and Amorite brothers who sojourned uh, from the land of Canaan seeking new homes. Their domain and inhabitants extended from northeast and southwest Africa across the Great Atlantis, which is the Great Atlantic Ocean, even unto the present North, South, Central America. Also, Mexico and what? Atlantis Islands, um, which is the Caribbean, 
before the great earthquake which caused the great Atlantic Ocean. In other words, before there was a... He just told you that before the continent to drift, we was already here and already had permission to be here and be the true possessors of this land. This is what he said. Continue on. So here, you don't believe me? It's in the Black Law Dictionary. You don't believe me? Let's go to what they say. Amorality. A court which has a very extensive jurisdiction of very time court, civil and criminal controversies arising from the acts done upon or related to the sea, and questions of prize. It is properly the successor of the consumer courts. So I had to go and find out what the consumer courts was. But before we get to that, which was emphatically the course of merchants and seagoing persons established in the principal maritime cities on the revival of commerce after the fall of the Western Empire. After the fall of the who? Western, Western Empire. Empire. Huh. Hmm. Sound like somebody had an empire prior to this one. Who could that have been? The consumer courts. Courts held by the consumer of one country within the territory of another. See? You gotta understand, it's the United States of America. Mm -hmm. Of America. Uh -huh. Of America. America is larger. Of America. Mm -hmm. Who the heck are the Americans? I just showed you that earlier. Who's by definition of who? The colored carpet natives, the aborigines, or the Americans. And remember, when I showed you the definition, it was not included in the definition. They're not American. That's why they had to um, do the 14th Amendment to make them U.S. citizens. Because they have the citizenship of the United States. And that's why Dress Scott case that we're not U.S. citizens because we are the Americans. Because remember, we're bound by this continent by heritage, by birthright. This is ours. <laughs> Matter of fact, the whole planet is. We just shared it with everybody. <laughs> so here, because you know, we don't want to kick our children out. You know, we still got feelings. <laughs> so here, within the territory of another, within or under the authority of our treaty for the <coughs> Now, what treaty was given to them to settle within our territory? It was called the Treaty of Peace and Friendship of Morocco and the United States. Remember, Morocco was the first nation to recognize the United States, which was the 13 colonies, not the whole 50 states. <laughs> they only have ports in 13 states. That's it, where they was able to do import and export amongst us. But we ran everything else. We ran the whole seven seas, everybody had to pay us tribute. That's right. England had to pay us tribute, France had to pay us tribute, Spain, Portugal, everybody had to pay us tribute if they wanted to travel the seven seas. Mm -hmm. That was merchant law, that was admiralty law. You don't believe me, get the books Ancient and Modern Britons by David McRitchie, volume one and two. He tells you in it that this is where the term blackmail came from because they, we extorted money from all of them. Wow. You want to get up here on the sea, you better, where is it? <laughs> <laughs> this is why they got scared that Somalians, remember the Somalians was going back to being the pirates, they was, getting, they was like, uh-oh, the Ottoman Empire get ready to reawaken. <laughs> <laughs> oh, snap. <laughs> we got the crowd with this. <laughs> <laughs> they go back to extorting us again. <laughs> kidnapping us. They even made a movie with, um, with Tom Hanks on the joint. <laughs> we got kidnapped, boss. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this. In some instances, they also have a criminal jurisdiction, but in the case respecting subjects to review by the courts of the home government. Who was the home government? The last of the United States consumer courts was what? Morocco. 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 And when was it abolished? Right when we picked up the banner to go and do what? Civil, Civil rights. Civil rights. Mm. 1955, they went to go find Martin Luther King. By 1956, abolish that. Mm -hmm. So no longer do you have your own court system. Mm -hmm. What you had until just 65 years ago. You just had it 60, 60 years ago. You just had your own court system. You just had it. And because we accepted civil rights, because we were trying to say, well, we don't want to be classified as civilist mortus, which means dead in the eyes of the law. Mm -hmm. However, Malcolm already said that if you're not looked at as a human being, then, then you can't get civil rights. Mm -hmm. You have to first be recognized as a human being, which means as being an indigenous, being a natural person. Then you can strive 
for civil rights. Because actually, in a sense, civil rights is already given to you automatically if you understand that. This is what Malcolm said. I will we'll show you. Come on. Let's, so you see. All right. So we know what slave is. Slave is somebody who's under the will of the master, period. Everything is only him. Look at it. He said, um, the master may sell or dispose of his body or person, which is i.e. the reason why they can go and kill you and shoot us out 50 times without getting in trouble. Of his industry and of his labor without being able to do anything, have anything, or acquire anything, but must be what belongs to his master. So, understand that, you see the reason why for Rosewood, you see the reason why for Move, you see the reason why for Black Wall Street, and for the destruction of the other, what? Black cities and towns that we have had within the last 150 some odd years since the so called release of slavery. Mm -hmm. After the Reconstruction period, why they formed the KKK to terrorize those towns and cities, the people, is because we were still classified as their property. Mm -hmm. You never wrote anything. And see, they wasn't going to tell you that you had to have a paper trail. Okay, I'll give you a good movie. Remember Roots? Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. Remember, they look for Kuta Kente to cut off that foot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right? Remember that? Mm -hmm. Now, there was two Sharif, or sheriffs, right? They were looking for Kuta Kente. They come upon this brother and his son. They had a horse and a wagon and a buggy. Mm -hmm. He said, let me see your papers. Mm -hmm. What was these papers? They would make you think that they was just freedom papers. So he pulls them out, he shows them, the guy give them back to him, throw them actually, throw them out, and they continue on. So they couldn't mess with them because they had their papers. But Kota, they didn't have no paper. I'm just saying, Kota didn't have no paper. So next scene, Kota got foot cut off. All right? Now I ain't saying paper can save you, I'm just saying that paper saves you. <laughs> If you understand what I'm saying. In other words, that's not the that's not the ultimate defining of, of what is going on, but it saved him and his son from getting their foot cut off or going into slavery. Because they was free by this time. Just go back and watch that scene again and you see exactly what I'm talking about. Because Kuta was what? Chattel property. And chattel was what? Includes animated as well as inanimated property. And that's what you still are classified today. You don't come from up under that three-fifth person status that they have classified you in Article 1, Section 2 of the Constitution. You write your own amendment. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> the 14th Amendment was never fully ratified. They voted before 21 states, and out of the 15 states, fit, um, they voted before 21 states, and out of the, out of the 21, 15 denied it. 15 denied it. Meaning that it was never, meaning that it was never passed. So, there, but they give you the impression that it was, and made you classify as U.S. citizens by granting you privileges, i.e., a driver's license, birth certificate, social security card. So they say that they have made you U.S. citizens by these artificial things, and even gave you the voting rights every 25 years signed by the President of the United States. Now, if you were citizen, would you have to have a voting right bill to be signed by the President every 25 years? The first year was by Lyndon B. Johnson in 1965, then by 25 years later by Ronald Reagan back in 1983-84, um, and then by George Bush by 2007. He signed it. He waited, he waited till the last day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I guess I get him there. Me and my brother Jeb done cheating him out of the voting right, you know, she's doing the last election. I guess we're going to give it to him this time. <laughs> All right. Go to the next slide, please. All right. So, I'm going to leave it right there. You can read this. This is Emory University, a report on the transatlantic slave, approximately 30,000 to 35,000 recorded trips of voyages made between 1560 to 1865, which is 305 years. Approximately 200 um, POWs, as I refer to prisoners of wars, um, to 500 prisoners of wars, which carry on these ships. Most of the time it was the smaller ships and they was only able to make trips um, actually about three to four times out the year because actually each trip was a three months, three months voyage. Um, I had to ask the question, well how did they get the water in order to, because you can only go without water for about a week, week and a half, otherwise you die. 
and on the open sea, you got to have water more because of the sea salt in the atmosphere mm -hmm. and uh, making you even more dehydrated. So what? Show me the machinery of their ability to distillate water, distill water. How? Where, where's their machinery at during these trips? That's all I want to know. Show me the um. Show me the ship. Right. Yeah, they preserve right. I'm all sorry. Stuff. I've been to the British Museum. I've been to the Smithsonian. I've been to the Natural um, um, History Museum in New York. I've already been to the Louvre in Paris. Um, her father been to um, the Egyptian Museum in Egypt. And guess what? Nobody found the ship yet. And you know these Europeans with their preservation, with their egos. You know they would have preserved that for you. Okay. <laughs> it's probably still something. They 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 would they would have said here go the boats with the chains and come on over here. Tour through on. it. Right. right. They would tour <laughs> through it. Put the chains on you. Do that fit. <laughs> Of us a drawing of, like of the ships looking like sardines. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> I'm just saying that we got we got to go back and find this stuff because right now it's a lie. It don't look good. <laughs> <laughs> and they uh, thought the earth was flat. <laughs> <laughs> Michael Cremo <laughs> might know where it is. <laughs> That's Michael Cremo. He can find. <laughs> Michael Cremo, hey, right. Right, you're right. Exactly. right, 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 right. Uh, <laughs> will you please find me a ship? <laughs> You got a book that thick. Right, you got a book that thick. Uh, stuff from 2.8 billion years ago. Where's the shit? It's probably the shit from what's, what's a link of a right, chain, a right? A link of a chain from at least. <laughs> <laughs> I seen the chain. Right. I said, right. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but, <laughs> but I'll finish y'all. Yeah. Appreciate y'all. <laughs> Let me tell you, I cannot thank this brother and sister enough for coming through today. I'm so, so thankful. This man here, you just really, if those of you who do not know, you, you know now. <laughs> I mean, if you could just sit and just have him to teach you all day long, I mean, you will be like, I never know this, you know. I'm so thankful. They're actually on their way to New York to a conference tomorrow, and we're so gracious to stop through here on their way up to New York. So please give them another <laughs>